Hello, dear friends of the internet. It is me, Edward, of Dash.Red, and today I offer you a special edition of the MNO Report. We're going to go visit George Donnelly in the new offices of Dash Columbia. It's right here in Sabaneta, Antioquia. 20 years ago, Sabaneta was a small town on the outskirts of Medellin. With the advent of the metro rail and the construction of countless apartment towers, Sabaneta has become one of the major suburbs of the greater Medellin area. I have lived in Sabaneta since 2014. Sabaneta is the home for Dash.Red. Currently, there are three businesses that accept Dash in Sabaneta. Regasi Pizzas and Pastas, Giji Arepas, which is only open at night, and Maderitos Steakhouse. I am happy to inform the Dash community that Sabaneta now hosts the first office for Dash in Colombia. It is a space shared by other business ventures. It is a low cost option that will help George Donnelly achieve the goals he has set in his proposals. All right, we are now at the offices of Dash Columbia with George Donnelly. So let's take a look around. What do you say, George? Yeah, this is uh, the this is the Dash Columbia office here in uh, Sabaneta, which is to the south of Medellin. Uh, we, share the, we share these offices with uh, some Venezuelan community organizations and small businesses. Here are our two uh, workstations and we also have access to, uh, to use the conference room to train uh, Venezuelan migrants and other people in how to use Dash. Uh, this way we don't have to pay, for example, to use a Starbucks or a Dunkin' Donuts. It, uh, it's, it's a little more peaceful, a little more professional. Let's talk about Dash Columbia first. What are the goals of Dash Columbia? So I would say the, um, the number one goal is to get a lot of people using Dash uh, for real transactions, real use cases where they benefit from using Dash. Um, and that's basically it, I mean, to build a uh, on a solid foundation, a Dash-only economy in Colombia, where there are tens of thousands of Dash merchants, places you can spend Dash, and, and you have a good reason to do it. Okay, and what what has been done up to now? What are the achievements of Dash Colombia? Well, we're approaching our uh, 450 active Dash merchants, um, most of them in Medellin, but a few in other parts of the country, such as Cúcuta. Uh, we have uh, more than 1,600 active uh, wallet installs. Um, so far, active Android wallet installs. Other wallets probably over, we bring us up to over 1,700. Uh, we have an active community. We have a lot of followers on social media. We've done, uh, I believe, more than 60 events. We have uh, merchants and consumers very excited about using Dash. Um, and we've established ourselves as uh, the strongest crypto community in Colombia, attracting the attention of a lot of, a lot of people. We've built a lot of alliances with uh, partners in this space. Um, and I think we've also um, showed off the real power, the real potential of Dash, uh, the digital cash vision. Okay. I think one of the most interesting things about the work that you've done up to now is the fact that there are so many businesses that accept Dash and I as a consumer, I actually go to these businesses and make purchases there and yeah, they really accept it and there's really no problem. And I think that that is, you know, in part due to the fact that you verify your merchants. Mm -hmm. And I want, to, I want you to tell us about what that process is like. Yes, yeah, so actually we have a bunch of salespeople and they go out and get merchants, but we don't just leave it at that. So we have a verifications team and uh, so step one I would say is verifying that the information is complete in our CRM. 
and then uh, we produce an hablador, which is a point of sale marketing, uh, a small point of sale marketing piece uh, with the QR code of the merchant. And then one of our, one of the members of the verification team goes out and makes direct contact with the owner of the business. Uh, we have a number of ways of doing this. It can be quite challenging. Sometimes we have to go back a few times. And then when we do that, when we make contact, we ensure that um, they have received an adequate uh, basic uh, orientation to Dash. You know, they've got their wallet. Um, they still have their wallet. They've written down their, their uh, recovery phrase. They know how to uh, ask us to buy back their Dash, you know, when they receive it. Yeah, which is a critical factor for the business because they know that it's real money because you buy it back. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, so once um, we verify that they, they have the stickers in place, you know, the stickers that say that they accept Dash. And um, yeah, so that's, that's the first part. But then we ensure that there's a continuing relationship. For example, we send out the marketing team and they do, um, they go out, uh, they make an appointment, and they meet with the owner and they record videos uh, promoting the business that we will share on uh, social media. And they also get images of the products, professionally taken photos of the products, most merchants already have this. And we create social media pieces around that. And then we uh, schedule, usually schedule events because we work a concentration strategy. So we schedule events in that neighborhood so that they can get some new customers. And then we just stay in contact all the time. We walk by, we visit, we say hello. But that, that's basically, we, we, we work to build an ongoing and very close relationship with our merchants. And I think so far it's been pretty successful despite uh, the, our limited resources because uh, of those 400 and almost 50 merchants, I think along the way we've only lost around 19 or 20. And a good number of those is because the owner, uh, the, there was a change in ownership or the business closed. Okay, let's talk about Dash Retail. This is the other proposal that is active and ongoing and funded and not exhausted. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about it. What is it? So uh, the idea behind Dash Retail is that, well, we need some tools to support mass adoption of Dash. Okay. And um, frankly, we just don't have them right now. Well, the Android wallet is solid, it's very good. Uh, the iOS wallet, there's a lot of work to be done with that. Um, but so let's say that we have all these merchants. So let's say somebody wants to buy some Dash from those merchants. Really, that's not an easy task to accomplish at this point. Let's say somebody wants to cash out their Dash. Um, Right now, it's a laborious process via WhatsApp, and that's only available to, uh, to merchants. Uh, let's say that somebody wants to send a remittance with Dash. Uh, right now, that's also a little bit of a laborious process, because really, a question that keeps coming up in Latin America is, where can I buy Dash? And we don't have a lot of good answers to that question. So what is Dash Retail going to do? It's software uh, with a... Um, some liquidity tools behind it that is going to enable every Dash merchant to become a Dash point of sale. So uh, no longer are we going to have that question of where do I buy Dash? Uh, you're going to be able to buy it at a lot of places. And people will also be able to cash out. It will simplify the buyback program so that it's painless for merchants because right now uh, for merchants to sell back their Dash to me is sometimes it's a little frustrating for them. They have to take screenshots and whatnot. And it could also enable every Dash merchant to become a place uh, where you can buy remittances. And, you know, you can say, hey, send some money to my mom in Caracas. Here's 50,000 Colombian pesos. Bam, it's done. So that's what Dash Retail, that's, that, those are the main deliverables for Dash Retail. Software that's going to run in a web browser. Anybody can install it. can just load it up on any uh, mobile device or computer. But the other thing is that uh, we've had some difficulties with point of sale software for Dash because uh, here, here's the basic problem. Uh, we sign up a merchant, merchant's like, yeah, re I'm ready to accept Dash, let's get this going. Okay, so we send a customer and it's 11 a.m. and the merchant's not there. The owner is not there, his employees are. 
And how is he going to receive the payment via his Dash wallet on his cell phone? His cell phone's not there either because he's right. not going to trust his, his, his employees with his Dash wallet, right? So, failure. That we were not, the client was that, and the customer was not able to pay with Dash. So, if there is any kind of computer or mobile device at the merchant, then with point of sale software, uh, that we can just run it on there and the employees can process the payment like any payment terminal and they can get the green check mark and know that the payment arrived with complete security and the, the funds are safely in the owner's wallet and we have the best of both worlds. It professionalizes acceptance of Dash payments. And so uh, there really have not been a perfect or not even perfect, just bearable options in the community for that. So now uh, the Dash retail technical team, Ash and Alex, uh, have uh, grabbed the uh, Spark uh, point of sale uh, software, which is very fine software. Um, and they have loaded up on AWS uh, to make it bulletproof. They have loaded up uh, the Dash Rates API uh, modified version, actually recoded in Golang for maximum reliability and, and, and speed. Uh, was originally coded by Codex, um, and so that's also up on AWS. They're constantly improving it, and so basically, this is infrastructure to build global ma uh, mass adoption Dash on. Because instead of before, where I would go to a, a merchant and say, "Well, charge me ten thousand pesos," and the POS wouldn't work. Now it works. It works all the time. And anybody can use this. It's at pos.pagacondash.com. Anybody can use it anywhere. It's very simple. It's non-custodial. Um, and so this is a, an early deliverable uh, bonus um, that, uh, that everybody can benefit from right now. Okay. Give us a brief timeline or, you know, how is the, the uh, time frame going to look for this project? So uh, within six months, uh, we expect to have a product that is going to uh, minimally work. And we're going to start uh, rolling it out to our merchants here in Colombia, some of our best merchants, uh, for testing. And within nine months, we expect it to be production ready and able to use at least across Colombia. And we will be studying other countries on a case-by-case -case basis. We will, we're also very open to partnering uh, with people in other countries uh, where we can provide a role as just like a software provider or a software host because behind the software there has to be uh, liquidity, there has to be a financial infrastructure and sometimes that's limited by nation state borders but uh, within nine months we should be in production, fully in production in Colombia and we should be able to have this at any number of merchants that are willing to, to accept this and we have previously uh, surveyed the merchants and they were very interested about the ability to sell uh, Dash. One thing that interests me about this proposal is the fact that it competes directly with the teller machines. And we have a number of teller machines here in Medellin, in the greater Medellin area, but they're really expensive. Mm -hmm. So can you give me an idea of how they're going to compete with that? Yeah, so um, we have a, a, some valued partners who run uh, crypto ATMs and Dash is on those ATMs here in Medellin. And we hope to see them expand, but the reality is that the minimum uh, rate uh, commission that they charge if you go to the machine to buy Dash is 3%. And uh, if you want to cash out your Dash, you're paying between 11 and 22%. And so, it's a break on the development of the ecosystem. So we expect that uh, with a Dash Retail, people are gonna pay no more than 2% either way. Wow. Um, now that's, that's an early estimate. Uh, we may use uh, some Dow funds to subsidize it, especially in the beginning. Uh, but, uh, and it's dependent on a lot of factors, but that's what we're aiming for. That's our goal because that's gonna enable us to come in under credit cards. And it's going to give Dash the fiat on and off ramps uh, that are going to just render any questions of, of, of our real world adoption moot that are going to, because a lot, and, and it's gonna re render moot the, the, the subject of how we always have to go through Bitcoin to get to fiat, right? 
it's very rare to find uh, Dash fiat trading pairs. Right. Well, now we're going to have thousands of places where you can go straight from Dash into fiat or fiat and into Dash. And they'll be right down the corner, you know, right there. Mm -hmm. We're close by. Awesome. Yeah, which is going to enable it us, to, hopefully, it's going to help to piece of the puzzle to break out of Bitcoin dominance. Okay. Excellent. You have one proposal that is up for votes right now that we have not yet mentioned, and that is Dash Venezuela remittances. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this proposal. So Dash Venezuela remittances is, is a long time coming. Starting uh, back at, at least in July of 2018, um, I was going out into the street attempting to work with Venezuelans uh, train them in Dash uh, and try to get them to remit money home using Dash. Um, our, a lot of them, our early efforts were not successful because I didn't have video to show them that you could actually use Dash to buy basic necessities in Venezuela, such as uh, eggs, flour, uh, car parts, uh, medicines, things like that. Right. Um, and so, um, but we kept pushing. And uh, we were lucky enough, we made some interesting contacts and we started being able to send some remittances. And I think we're close to 30 uh, or 35 verified uh, remittances. Um, but then we realized that a large, just like with the buyback program for the merchants here in Colombia, a lot of these remittance senders it's challenging to get, like, I may have, you know, Jose here in, uh, in Medellin who's like, okay, I'll give Dash a try, but you got to talk to my mom in this small town of Venezuela, and she's got to accept it too, right? Yeah, okay, that's pretty hard. Right. You know, mom only knows Bolivares. So, we realized we have to offer Bolivares on that side too, and that's, that's very challenging. That's, that's not something that I have the funding with the, the Columbia proposal to attempt. And um, also it's been a long journey to getting the videos that we need demonstrating uh, that you know you really can use Dash in, in Venezuela. Uh, thankfully we made contact with Carlos Peñalosa, journalist in Caracas. He's produced a wonderful batch of videos and he's very excited to continue with us. Uh, we've made a bunch of other contacts there, and we also have uh, three new contacts here uh, with uh, the coldvens.org. Uh, we're working very closely with them and a couple of, of Venezuelan businessmen, Johan and Hussein. And um, so we managed to put together, um, uh, thanks to the investigative work of Juan Ortega, who had a Dash Boost proposal on this topic. So basically, we figured out that the current methods that people are using to send Dash home. Uh, to Venezuela, they, if you compare... Or just to send money home. Yeah, yeah, yeah to send money home, right, not that. But just sending money home, so you might send, you might have 100,000 pesos here, but only 60,000 pesos worth of value would arrive in Venezuela. And it, the numbers vary, every day we calculate it, but generally it's between 10 and 70% uh, more value arrives in Venezuela when you use Dash to send it. And so this is a very, there's a lot of red meat here in the Dash use right. case. It's a very strong Dash use case. There are a lot of Dash use cases that frankly are not that strong yet, unfortunately. This one is maybe the strongest. And of course, we all knew this. I mean, crypto is strongest when it crosses border. Dash, that's where Dash is strongest. Can't be stopped. Yeah. And so, and you know, here we have a two million strong uh, Venezuelan migrant population in Colombia all working to send money home to maintain the few people that remain in Venezuela and all of whom are in desperate straits, it's a question of life and death, uh, socialist dictatorship uh, basically choking the life out of the country and so it's a great opportunity, it's like the perfect opportunity to use Dash and so, but it, it's not something that we can do that cheaply because we have to have financial infrastructure we have to have a lot of, we have, we have to have teams in multiple cities because I could get a group of 10 people into this office who want to send remittances home and one's in Maracaibo, one's in Maturin, one's in Caracas, one's in Valle de Pascua, they're all over the place. Right. And each of those people has a beneficiary who, if we want them to receive their remittance as Dash instead of Bolivares, then there has to be work with each one of those beneficiaries in Venezuela. 
and that due to the intermittent uh, internet access and, and, and electrical uh, infrastructure in Venezuela, we can't always do it all remotely. Uh, so it's, it's a complex project, but I think it has uh, a very, very great potential for producing a, a very strong use case, a lot of real transactions, transactions that we can document, uh, hard use of Dash, and it can go on indefinitely. And we, because even, even when there's a regime change in Caracas, uh, Venezuela is destroyed. They're going to be rebuilding for years. So this, it's not like everybody's, every Venezuelan who left is going to go home immediately. Um, and already, where is Dash strongest on the ground? Colombia and Venezuela. So it's, 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 we're building on the shoulders of, of, of the work of many people to make this happen. And I think it has concrete benefits for us. Okay. Excellent. All right. Anything else that we should discuss today? Well, there's a lot of stuff going on. There are a lot of things in the works. Uh, not all of it. I'm sworn to secrecy on some of it. <laughs> Seriously. Um, but, yeah, we're working every day. Um, I think there are a lot of interesting things to come. Uh, we are focused on, at this point, on real transactions, true use, new business with Dash, use cases that are going to attract crowds, such as the big refill discounts, um, and that are going to generate a lot of repeat business. We're uh, focused on the, the, P, the point of sale software, how it's going to offer uh, transaction reporting now in real time. Uh, it's going to be, it's connected already. Dash Watch has direct access to the, the statistics um, on the use of the POS. And we're looking into setting up a web page where you're, you're going to be able to browse, uh, you know, our, our, our real transactions of Dash um, whenever you please, you know, 24 so. Okay. Outstanding. Excellent work, George Donnelly. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you.